the struggling actor, I need all the breaks that I can get. At Liberty Butchamug. Cut. Liberty Bibberty. Cut. Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance, so you only pay for what you... Line? Need. Action. Cut. You can't say that. Sorry. Is this where they're going to put the Statue of Liberty? Liberty... Are we married to Mutual? Cut. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Tomorrow on E.T., we're with Joe Jonas talking about his new TV gig and how Joe and his wife, Sophie Turner, are TikTok obsessed. We do have fun with those. I put it in my saved list. Yes! Then, only we're with real-world New Orleans royalty, Melissa and Danny, before their MTV homecoming. How scared were we? I needed to refill my Xanax first thing on the list. I, I needed to see the chat. We came in medicated and ready. It's going to be a magic happening now. A local seafood restaurant is being investigated after hundreds of shark fins were discovered. Good afternoon, I'm Alicia Barrera, and coming up, we hear from a shark expert. And SAPD investigating a potential sex crime at a local charter school. What we know about the person they're looking at next. Gray and gloomy today, and we're looking for some rain. There is a bit of activity on the radar screen. We'll take a look at that and a more promising chance of showers and storms down the line. I'll see you in a bit. News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, not your ordinary bust. What you're seeing here are nearly 400 shark fins confiscated from a San Antonio seafood restaurant. The Texas game wardens discovered them last week and shared that announcement on Facebook. And that Facebook post received more than 7,000 likes in less than 24 hours. While shark fin is a delicacy in some parts of the world, it is illegal in the state of Texas. Experts say it's also a gruesome and unnecessary practice. Alicia Barrera spoke with a marine expert and has more on the role that sharks play in our ecosystem. 381 whole shark fins were carefully placed on the ground for this photo op by the Texas Game Wardens. At the bottom, you can see bags full of frozen shark fins, Texas Game Wardens say, were found inside of a restaurant's commercial freezer. Buying or selling shark fins is illegal in Texas and is a Class B misdemeanor that could come with a fine or jail time. Aside from being illegal, marine experts say shark finning is cruel. If they do not have these fins, then they would just sink to the bottom of the ocean and they would not be able to breathe. Chrissy Potsterwinski is a senior aquarist at SeaWorld San Antonio, where they educate guests on seven different species of sharks. Their pectoral fins to help them steer while they're swimming in the ocean and their dorsal fin to help them stay stable and upright. The small size of the fins pictured is also concerning. Sharks do not reach reproduction until very late in life, so they um, have to wait about 10 or more years. So that's why it's so important to have these sharks reproducing and growing up. According to the Texas Game Warden, all shark fins were seized as evidence, but the owner as well as the restaurant will not be named for the time being as a case is still pending. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Keep in mind the sale, trade, purchase and transportation of shark fins was made illegal in Texas by Governor Greg Abbott back in June of 2015. San Antonio police confirm they are investigating a possible sexual assault on the campus of a Northside Charter School. Investigators tell KSAT 12 the incident happened April 12th at Brooks Collegiate Academy in the 4800 block of Vance Jackson. An employee subcontracted to work in the school's kitchen accused of having sex with a minor student. Superintendent Lisa Freeman shoots today told KSAT in a statement the school immediately reported the incident to law enforcement and that the vendor employee is no longer allowed on campus. No arrests have been made yet. More than five years have gone by and still no arrests. Now Crime Stoppers renewing the effort to find the person who killed Eric Crawford back in 2016. He was found dead in a vacant apartment on Fairhaven Street in October of 2016. That's near I-10 and Medical Drive. Investigators believe that Crawford was killed days before he was found. If you know anything about this case, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And do you recognize this guy or the vehicle? Crime Stoppers says this person stole from the Macy's at La Quintera earlier this month. It was on April 5th. They say an employee tried to stop the man in the photos. The suspect threatened them with pepper spray. 
then took off in this white Mercedes SUV. If you know anything, the number to call on your screen right now, 210-224-7867, 224 stop. Taking a look at your traffic authority, it is foggy, murky out there. I-10 at 410, you can see traffic moving along really slowly on these slick streets. Just a light mist falling, and uh, you can see at least in one area, it looks as though there's a stalled vehicle in the center lane. Here is another look at I-35 at Judson. Again, no trouble spots here to speak of, but everything is moving along very slowly, which is probably a good thing considering the roads are slick. Yeah, and unfortunately, this is just that nuisance moisture that's falling. No real good, beneficial, appreciable rain. I mean, we're talking a few hundredths of an inch here and there, but enough to get everything damp outside and especially the roadways during the evening commute. Now, you look at the radar, just a few little blips here and there in and around San Antonio and the main corridors where people are driving home from work and going to do other activities. A lot of this is just that measly nuisance drizzle activity and nothing more. A few very light showers recently rolled through parts of Wilson County, Floresville area, Lavernia, Stockdale. You go off to the west and that's where we've had more appreciable rain and actually some beneficial rain. Switching radar sites to get a better view. You see near Uvalde, thunderstorm right here. This is moving to the southeast at about 30 miles per hour. So that's uh, just on the southern edge of the Uvalde County line here, far north of Crystal City. Uh, timing this out for you and a few folks down the line, it's in a pretty rural part of our area. Nonetheless, it's moving at about 35 miles per hour and well, nothing pops up, but Batesville, I think you'd be the next in line to actually get that little downpour. But just these nuisance sprinkles here and there around San Antonio for now. We'll take another look at the radar, some of that activity out west and how about these temperatures today? They'll be changing though, and a more promising chance of rain down the line. See you in a bit. Thank you, Adam. Turning to the war in Ukraine, Lviv becoming a deadly target. It's already been bombed for a month now, but it's now bracing for the next phase of stepped up attacks by Russia. The intensifying conflict furthering the current refugee and humanitarian crisis there. ABC's Justin Finch in Washington, tracking the latest. From Bucha to Mariupol, the remains and ruins of Russia's war in Ukraine are plain to see. The UN estimating nearly 5 million Ukrainians have fled since Russia's invasion began in February. And this is uh, the fastest growing and one of the, the largest refugee crises we're seeing in Europe since uh, the Second World War. At a steel plant in Mariupol, the city council is saying there are at least 1,000 civilians seeking shelter, mostly women, children, and the elderly, along with Ukrainian troops who've been fighting off a barrage of Russian attacks. Those troops flatly rejecting Russian demands for them to surrender. ABC News cannot independently verify these claims. Shipments of that $800 million U.S. military aid package continuing to arrive in the country. The Pentagon saying Ukrainian troops will soon begin training on the more advanced weapons provided by the U.S. They understand how to use artillery and it won't, we don't believe will take very long uh, or, or require much detailed training to get them up to speed on American howitzers. Time is ticking. The Pentagon tracking Russia stepped up attacks in eastern Ukraine. So it's a problem. Visiting western Ukraine, Poland's prime minister called Ukraine's struggle one for the freedom and security for all of Europe. A senior U.S. defense official tells ABC News Russia's combat power has been reduced by some 25 percent since the invasion of Ukraine began. That reduction includes cuts in military capabilities, including troop casualties, vehicles and aircraft destroyed by Ukrainian troops and missiles they've launched. I'm Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. With the news of the federal mask mandate being lifted for mass transit, including via locally, we wanted to hear from the people it impacts most, you. So we went out and asked people who use public transit daily what they think. It's a good feeling for them to actually uh, uh, lift the mandate. But it makes you leery as well, too, because people who aren't vaccinated, it kind of puts them in a different pool next to people who are vaccinated. But sometimes you want that uh, precautionary measure to stay there as well. I'm tired of wearing a mask. It's just, it's just been too long. Via not the only place that masks are no longer required. The change also includes airlines, airports, other mass transit systems to make their own decision about the mask requirements. While they're optional, Via reminds riders the CDC still recommends people wear a mask in places 
where social distancing is no longer feasible. In terms of new cases, they're still going up in parts of the country. Here at home, SA Metro Health reporting 94 new cases, 51 patients are in the hospital, and the seven-day average is down to 105. Across the country, though, COVID-19 cases increasing in children for the first time in about three months. The American Academy of Pediatrics reports more than 33,000 children tested positive for the week ending April 14th. And while that seems high, it's still much lower than what we saw at this year's peak in January when more than 1.5 million kids were testing positive. April is National Donate Life Month. Right now, more than 100,000 people are waiting for an organ transplant. And that includes people like Mike Demas, who's from Dallas and is waiting for a new kidney. I have had um, several friends who have gone and to be screened um, and all have been eliminated for, for one reason or another. In my life, a kidney would make um, a tremendous difference. You can hear the rest of Mike's story along with experts on organ donation during our KSAT Community Donate Life Month Town Hall. The Town Hall tomorrow at 2 p.m. You can watch it on KSAT.com or our KSAT streaming platforms. HEB holding a job fair for some of its warehouse positions tomorrow from 9 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon. If you're interested, text SELECTOR to the number on your screen, 81931, to enter your information online. Interviews will be conducted on site. Here's the address, the 5600 block of Business Park Suite 509. You can find all this information on our website at ksat.com. It's sprinkling outside and you pair that up with the warm temperatures and that means the bugs are coming out. Not to worry, Consumer Reports put the bug sprays out there to the test. We're gonna tell you which ones came out on top when we come back. Plus you know them from the Budweiser commercials. Now you can see them in person. The Budweiser Clydesdales in town where they're going to make an appearance this weekend. Next. I'm Myra Arthur here in the KSAT newsroom with a look at what we're working on for the six o'clock news today. A disagreement over phone lines believed to be the motive behind a double murder in 2019. That's what we learned on the first day of the capital murder trial of Jonathan Johnson. Erica Hernandez was inside the courtroom while both sides presented opening statements today. She'll walk us through what happened today at six. And it is time to update the San Antonio City Council map. So could your district be changing? We'll show you the first draft of that new map. All that and more coming your way in less than an hour on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. After taking a break during the pandemic, the Great Texas Air Show returns this weekend. Part of the many sites, both in the air and on the ground, will be the famous Budweiser Clydesdales. They are a crowd favorite. And yes, these are the horses that are seen in various Budweiser commercials. And they're in San Antonio right now, hanging out at the Rose Palace. There, the giant horses are being washed, grooms and groomed and having their saddles polished for the air show, which is this Saturday and Sunday at Joint Base San Antonio Randolph. We'll have eight horses total. All eight of those horses will be hooked up to the wagon. They're going to be pulling them around the air show there for people to look at, take pictures of, as well as our Dalmatian up on top of that wagon. Can't forget about him. Can't forget about the Dalmatian, the Great Texas Air Show, which celebrates the 75th anniversary of the U.S. Air Force and the 80th anniversary of the Air Education and Training Command. Well, it is free. It is open to the public. You can read more at KSAT.com. I always wanted to ride one of those. Warm weather, humidity, and hopefully a little bit of rain. Well, that makes it the season for bugs, too. It means you're going to need a good repellent to protect you from the bites. 12 of your size, Marilyn Moore, it shows us which ones work best so you can enjoy the outdoors bug free. Insects bugging you? Consumer Reports put sprays, lotions, and wipes to the test. Volunteers applied repellent and stuck their arms into cages with 200 disease-free mosquitoes. But the bugs that bite you aren't necessarily disease-free. With cases of mosquito and tick-borne diseases on the rise, it's crucial to protect yourself. Take Lyme disease. The CDC estimated 476,000 cases each year between 2010 and 2018, a 45% jump 
from the previous decade. But not all repellents protect adequately. So what works best? Our testing paints a pretty clear picture. No matter the brand or what kind of repellent you're using, products made with 25 to 30 percent DEET worked the best. Here are two CR recommends, 3M Ultrathon Insect Repellent 8 and Ben's Ticket Insect Repellent Wilderness Formula Pump. Both excelled at protecting against mosquitoes and ticks. If you prefer to avoid DEET, there are alternatives. Consumer Reports also recommends repellents with 20% picaridin or 30% oil of lemon eucalyptus. No matter which repellent you use, you need to apply it properly for it to be effective. Use a thin coat on all exposed skin. You can also spray on top of your clothing, but don't apply underneath. And with kids, it's best to spray it into your hands and rub it onto the child's exposed skin and face. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Took a good live camera right now. That is supposed to be showing us the airport. But well, it, it is. I know it's nuisance rain, but <laughs> it is still nice to have something on the camera lens. It's moisture. Okay. It is, but I'm devil's advocate here where this makes it look like it's so much more than what's really oh, falling yeah. out there. That's the problem. And it's just that nuisance, sprinkly, misty action. That's all we have out there. I mean, a lot of it's underneath the radar beam because it's just drizzle, which we've had three hundredths of an inch so far at the airport officially. I mean, we're talking a few hundredths here and there. Hey, look at this between Windcrest Converse, Randolph Air Force Base, a little bit of green indicating just that light sprinkle activity and that's really all we've been seeing around town this afternoon and now into the evening. Now this afternoon we had some storms out west and we still do have a bit of activity farther to the west of San Antonio. Let's go up to the hill country. We didn't take a look at the hill country earlier and I like to switch radar sites so we get a better grasp of what's happening here. South of Rock Springs, moving toward Lakey, actually, some light to moderate rainfall here. You see it, that last batch just missed those of you in Lakey. I know you're probably thinking, here it comes, here it comes, and then you got a sprinkle. Most of it was south of the city of Lakey. Hit Camp Wood, however, so that's good. But there's a closer look to that. Happy Hollow and down toward Concan. Concan missing most of the activity. And there's one thunderstorm that's still ongoing south of Uvalde. This did have a history of producing larger hail about the size of a quarter, so about one inch in diameter. And this is headed toward Batesville as we speak. So Batesville looks like this is actually going to hold together for you to actually get this activity as it moves in. There's a look at the timelines moving at about 35 miles per hour. Batesville, you're on track for 537 p.m. About 20 minutes from now, the heart of that should be in Batesville with a little bit of lightning and thunder. But let's talk about how much rain has fallen within the areas that have had the thunderstorms out west. Locally, obviously not much, just a few hundredths of an inch. But you go basically parts of northern Valverde County in the really rural part of the county. Some happy cattle, got a nice little soaking, half an inch to an inch. And when you see these green colors just west of Uvalde, between Brackettville and Uvalde along Highway 90, uh, that indicates some of the higher accumulations, the dark green and even these yellows. Look at this. Good for some of the ranches and pastures there along Highway 90 and in the vicinity of Highway 90, Brackettville toward Uvalde. So that's what we have out there right now. Let's take a look at our future cast here going forward. And yeah, this heavy shower activity is going to stay west of San Antonio. It's all dissipating as it moves in locally. Just these little blips on the radar screen here and there, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m. And through this basically into the nighttime hours, just that nuisance mist drizzle and dampness. A few hundredths of an inch is what it's going to be adding up to. I mean, yes, better than nothing. I just tend to get a little greedy in these situations, and I would, of course, like more. If we're going to have this, we might as well have something good falling from the clouds. 10% chance here and there, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. What we're looking at is Monday. Remember yesterday we were saying Monday's the day that has the potential of increasing those rain and storm chances. We've bumped it up to 40%, probably the first part of the day on Monday as a cold front drops in. So that's our best hope for some more widespread and possibly some heavy rain as well. That's what we're focusing on. Look at these temperatures. I mean, we're talking 60s this afternoon. Justin Horn and I were texting and we're like, feels like November out there. It's like a November day. 66 Rio Medina, 65 Bulverde, Stinson now at 71 degrees. Steady temperatures all evening with this dampness, damp roads, 
but not much to show for that dampness in the rain gauge. And tomorrow morning, mostly in the mid 60s. By the afternoon, though, we're back in the 80s tomorrow. So we'll get back into the mid and upper 80s. We'll start the day in the 60s with low clouds. By the midday and afternoon, we'll start seeing that sunshine. 85 degrees, the high temperature, closer to 90 farther south of San Antonio. And then Monday, again, that's our focus for the next better, more promising chance of rain. We'll concentrate on Monday. Thank you, Adam. All right, very exciting news coming out today in the sports world. Greg, you're ready for some high school football. Yeah, absolutely. This is the way we're going to kick off the 2022 season with a triple header in the Alamo Dome, and it's all going to be broadcast live right here on KSAT 12 with our partnership with TSP. A major announcement made today. We'll let you know who's involved in this endeavor, and the Mavs get even in the NBA playoffs coming up. A major high school football event revealed today when the KSAT Pigskin Classic was unveiled this morning at the Alamo Dome. KSAT 12 Vice President General Manager Phil Lane announcing the first to kick off the 2022 high school football season will be a triple header in the Alamo Dome on Saturday, August 27th. That includes some of the best teams in the city, all broadcast live. Smithson Valley and Reagan, Johnson and Judson and Brennan and Steele, all part of this unprecedented event in San Antonio high school football history. Cheerleaders from every school were on hand today for the big announcement that will be a partnership between KSAT 12 and Texas Sports Productions that will have the first game kicked off at 1130. That will be part of a 12 and a half hour live broadcast here on KSAT 12 on that day and night. As part of the announcement today, athletic directors from five school districts and six head coaches were represented. What made you want to get involved in this this year, Larry? Well, you know, number one, it's a great event. And, uh, you know, uh, j just to be a part of that excitement, you know, you hope to get to some big games later in the year. And anytime any exposure you can get to that earlier is just going to help you that that much better or that much more in, uh, uh, later in the year in a bigger stage. And, and then, of course, you know, I think uh, the, the ability to get in the Alamo Dome, if you make a playoff run, you know, some of your kids hadn't played here, so they now they've been in it. They're, they're a little less wide-eyed. Such an exciting event, you know, three games in a row, you know, Alamo Dome, buy one ticket, watch all the games. I mean, awesome event, you know. They put on a great show, that, you know, to kind of hype it up today. So we're just excited to be part of the process, and hopefully we'll play great on Saturday night. All right, let's take a look at that schedule to start with a one hour edition of Texas East starting at 10 a.m. 11 a.m. pregame show. And you see Smithson Valley and Reagan will be the first game. Judson and Johnson the second and Steele and Brennan will be the third. The Mavericks have ended up their playoff series against the Utah Jazz, even Steven last night. And what made it so amazing, they did it without star Luka Doncic, who missed his second straight playoff game with a strained calf. Jalen Brunson was able to step up and score a career high 41 points. Max Kleber hit eight of the Mavs playoff record 22 three-pointers to bounce back from a 10-point deficit to win it, 110-104. Golden State Warriors have won their first two games of the first round playoff series against the Nuggets with Steph Curry coming off the bench for the second straight postseason game. And what makes it so amazing, he didn't play for a month in the regular season with a foot injury. Curry was able to score 34 points. He did it in just... Just under 23 minutes, the Nuggets undoing was the third quarter when they were outscored 44 to 30. Nikola Jokic wasn't around to see the end of this 126-106 loss after he was ejected. Ooh, second technical, not two at once. Just two. yeah, Gone. two in a game. You got it. You're out. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Some real rain just south of Uvalde right now heading into Batesville. Otherwise, just nuisance drizzle activity near 90 again by Thursday. Better chance of rain on Monday, 40% right now. We'll see you again at 6.